Okay, good afternoon, guys. Uh, welcome to another live trading clinic. My name is Steve Ruffley. I'll just go through the short presentation, just get through the formalities, then we'll uh, we'll kick off the main event. So the risk warning, remember that spread betting and CFD trading carry high levels of capital and resulting losses at each initial deposit. The members for everyone to please ensure you follow the standards involved. The information in current value statement don't so extensive decision of say to invest, nothing is your investment advice. The information provided those are accurate data is produced. Education only, the content of the webinar is posted under the moderator on intro.com. The content is not constitute financial investment or tax advice. Intro.com will not set an ability of the content comes with during the session. So we're going to go over some live charting analysis, multiple time frame trading. Um, got the election, which is our focus um, right now. Got my own views on that, as I always do, so we'll go through that in a minute. And the markets are winging around, moving around, uh, not just off the back of the UK elections, that's for sure, but uh, what was said by Janet Yellen and, you know, some, some various things that are filtering through the market. So uh, interesting times. A lot of money to be made right now, a lot of money, but also a lot of money to be lost. So uh, we have to uh, obviously weigh up these fundamentals and technicals and see exactly what we're trying to do here today. So as always, I just have a general view of the market and, and have an idea of what uh, what the market is trying to achieve. So we saw that quite strong sell-off um, in the morning in, in Europe. We're still fairly low in the UK, I would say, uh, you know, perhaps some more room for, for upside. But the market is just quite difficult to trade full stop um, at the minute. Uh, I've been taking some quite large positions on recently, and it's been yeah, it's been been interesting. I mean, I'm you know unlike most people on FX Street, you know, I make my money from trading. So you know, I'm I'm up nearly 16% on my uh, my money's accounts on the last 18 days. So the amount of size I trade, you know, that's good money. You know, it's, it's good money. It's it's it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, I was, you know, I've traded you know, lots of different styles and lots of different accounts over the years, and this is the first time I've ever I've taken anybody else's money on. I've always traded my own money, and it's interesting to get into this mindset um, of trading, you know, kind of not for a purpose, you know, but just having your not someone to answer to, but having, you know, not just the markets to answer to and taking your profit, but doing things, you know, in a very structured way, and you know, having, you know, some real accountability. So it's been interesting, and there's been some real opportunities in in the markets right now. And I still don't think we've finished on the um, on the upside of the indices just yet. I think there's a bit of natural profit taking before an inevitable outcome. So if we, you know, we're going to look at the UK, um, for instance. Let's look at you know the, the the FTSE and this real kind of selling action, you know, from these highs of seven thousand. You know, it's just an anticipation of the outcome. I mean, what the outcome is going to be? I don't know. I don't really care to be honest. I'm not interested. I mean, politicians. Pretty much are the same anyway. You know, it's when Obama took over from, from um, you know George Bush, he was left with the same problems. And you know, I think Labour and Ed Miliband, the guy's an idiot. You think he's got to come in and start doing all these kind of you know, you know, p pumping money back into the economy and not cutting as aggressively. And we can, you know, there's only so much money to go around. It doesn't matter if it's David Cameron and Miliband. They, they all have the same problems. You know, we have a failing NHS, we have a failing benefit system, we have people that think they can live their lives for free, and we can't support it anymore. We're an aging population. We don't have the people coming through with the the money, the job prospects, or, or even the kind of motivation. You know, if kids these days can't afford their own home, homes and don't... Um, you know, believe that they can get on the ladder, then what's the point? The whole thing just falls apart. The reason why, you know, mortgages came in were so popular was to keep people motivated. You know, if you weren't motivated, we'd take your house off you. But, if you, you know, we've taken with it already with society. So if people don't have those kind of things to aspire to, never have had job security, start life with a massive debt, well, where's the country going to be in 20, 30 years' time? Not anywhere good, is it? So I think this election is going to make, mean the stock market is going to sell off. You know, it's absolutely ludicrous. You know, I get spoke to, well, I get rung up by journalists, you know, like Reuters, Bloomberg, etc., all the time, asking me why the sell-off, you know, is happening now, Steve. Is this due to the election? No. Well, it's nothing to do with the election. People are just waiting for the known, aren't they? You know, the, the, the average retail trader is not sat here now. Is he going, I'm going to sell the footsie because I think Labour will get in. I'd just be idiotic. Why would anybody do that? The markets are naturally correcting because we've been to the highs. We couldn't make a new high from uh, from you know back here in early May. So then we've technically sold off. I mean the fibs tell you it all. Red lines, pivot line, green lines, buy it back. I mean it's not hard, is it? I mean how many presentations have I done on 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 FX Street? Hundreds. How many presentations have I done over the last four years? Thousands. And it's like look for the basic reason why markets move. They go up. And when they go up, they stop and they go back down. Okay, so this one's overextended. It should have perhaps bounced around here, but it didn't. It thought about it a few times, rejected it, 
So as far as it came down here, you know, 1,200 ticks, it's going to down here, 1,200 ticks. Again, buy low, sell high. Okay, it was that in Copenhagen uh, over the weekend, launching my new kind of software and new products, you know, speak to an interesting company called Tradable. And I was uh, doing a presentation to some young guys about this kind of stuff. And it's like, Steve, how do you trade? And so we forget the most basic rules as traders. Buy low, sell high. Find out where value is. You know, we're always looking for another reason to get involved in the markets. Is it the election? Is it what Janet Yellen said? Is it this? Is it that? That's the underlying tone. I've always told you the markets move 20% of the time fundamentally, new news, people's sentiment, and 80% of the time technically. This is how you trade markets. You find a high point, you wait for it to break, you get some confirmation around this pivot, and then you do what the market wants you to do. It doesn't want to go up, it's going to go down. So how low could the FTSE go today? Well, you can get down to these levels down here, perhaps potentially, 6691. But, you know, really, you know, you think that UBS, you know, you think that Deutsche Bank, you think these huge hedge funds are actually trading the UK markets off the election. If they were, they were doing it back here or back here. They won't be doing it today here. This is just fear and greed coming into play in the markets, isn't it? You know, people get frightened because they don't know what the outcome's going to be, and it might affect their poxy little life. But that's it, isn't it? So people might, you know, get out of their investment funds. But again, you know, it doesn't work like that. You know, you're not going to get your average retail trader making huge bets on the outcome of the election because nobody really knows what that effect is going to be. All we could potentially speculate is that once a government comes into play, interest rates are going to go up. But we know that no matter what the government is. You know, it's amazing, isn't it? All these pre-election, you know, waffling sessions we've had where the Conservatives say, oh, we're going to do this. You know, we're going to keep the NHS and, you know, we're going to build new homes for them young people. Then Labour come in and say, we're going to put even more into the NHS, build even more homes. You know, what with? Yeah, well, where's this money coming from? They can only get them the money from the same people, the same electoral role, can't they? They can't just magic it out of thin air. And you think all these policies, like hitting the non-doms and getting the tax off the big corporations, it was that easy to do. It had been done by now. Okay? The, 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 you know, people like Ed Medeband, he, he's an absolute walking contradiction. He's meant to be, what, new Labour, old Labour for the people. He's the only person, in, you know, uh, the only leader that's going to get hit by the mansion tax because he lives in mum and, mum and dad's, you know, £2 million house in London. I mean, are these people that really should be making decisions for us that really care about what happens in the economy, what happens for the future? I mean, it's absolutely laughable. I mean, at least David Cameron... He's been fairly upfront about stuff. You know, I wouldn't say he's his, his biggest fan, but, you know, he's made these cuts. You know, he's, he's, he's kind of done and said what he's done. The economy's grown. Unemployment's down. But these things are going to happen anyway. You know, the, the, the British people are not just going to roll over and die and give up, are they? People are survivors. People get on with stuff. So, the fit, you know, when you see, you know, the, the, it's always lightest after, you know, the, the dawn is always, you know, dark after the dawn, whatever the saying is, you know, after this terrible credit crunch when everyone's doom and gloom and the world's ended, it can only get better. I mean, the world's never ended yet, have it, has it? We've just continued. And it's just cycles. So for me, I would say that really the UK uh, FTSE, you know, is, is again, going back to technical trading, we've sold off for one, two, three, four, five hours this morning. So you're bound to be a bit of green. So from a technical perspective, I would say the FTSE, you know, is certainly going to look um, to this point, this lower point as a pivot. And if we don't hold and close above it and get back into this range, then we're going back down. So if the market, in air quotes, and the people like the other the bankers and institutions are really going to sell the FTSE back on, on the back of this election, then, yeah, we've got downward momentum. And we could certainly go another, I don't think we've got another 1,500 ticks today. But, I mean, who knows? Who knows what could happen? We do generally see some big moves, uh, you know, when people are switching in and out of positions. But it's not retail people, is it? It's not retail that move in the market. It's institutions, central banks. Uh, and... You know, realistically, you know, what, what what is the worst that can happen? If it's a Labour coalition, do you really care? I don't really care. I don't know. I mean, what 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 what's Labour ever done for anybody? You know, what's what's the Conservatives ever done for anybody? I mean, it's hard to kind of get that you know passionate feeling back into politics when the left and the right, you know, are just basically one straight line. You know, we're frightened about you keep getting in. You keep a bunch of nutters, you know. Nigel, Nigel Farage is just a caricature. He's not really got any real ideas. He's not got any real policies. All he's trying to do is strike into the cord of a frightened nation. 
And we don't even have the allegiance or the alliance anymore of that Labour, you know, will rally the troops and, you know, get, you know, get all them people back on board because they've seen the public sector freeze on, on, on pay rises and, and, you know, pensions are looking uncertain now. You know, there isn't the money to keep people in the lifestyle that the public sector promised. It just isn't doesn't work anymore. The, the whole thing's broken. So at least David Cameron's idea of shaking things up and um, you're know, breaking the benefit system and getting us out of this kind of culture, these things are going to take 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, generations full of people. So no decision, no government that's, that's brought in now is going to make any real difference. I would say that if Labour come in, there'll be a bit more uncertainty into the economy because at least with Cameron, we've had you know the time spent and invested, the money put in, the money and the cuts taken out. So we know what that plan is. If Labour come in, then obviously there will be a bit more uncertainty because we know they have the same problems. We know they don't really have the tools to fix them. But again, things are generally in a better state than where they were. So the, the reason why the stock markets would sell off because it is uncertainty, isn't it? If the Conservatives get in, that's fine. The markets bang, continue and go back up. If Labour come in, there's that uncertainty. Markets go down a little bit further. But then we all know that pension funds are heavily invested in the FTSE. People are heavily invested, you know, personal wealth in the, in the FTSE, the main indices. So they go back up until, as I've always said, interest rates in the UK go up and then we go back down. So I still think we've got potential to get 7,300 in the FTSE on the upside. There's just too much money in the markets, too much money. But then after, uh, you know, the US rise interest, raising interest rates, and that's going to be some point this year, isn't it, late this year, uh, then the UK will follow suit. And then it's game over because then we really do have to see if the economy can support higher interest rates and if individuals can stimulate our growth rather than businesses, you know, with, with a higher debt burden. And they can't. I know they can't. So what we see is, you know, these kind of dip scenarios will start to be on the opposite way. So as I said to you, you know, on the dailies, you know, we're certainly nowhere near uh, the end of a, a, a bull trend just yet. Okay. So, I mean, this again, every time we've seen these lows and these rejections in the past, We've gone up to make new highs. So this could be another scenario. We come down here, all the way down here, and then we close here. Then Friday, oh, we don't know. Well, is it good? Is it bad? Then we close here in this trend line. Then we're going to make new highs. Okay? We might go sideways for a little bit around this trend. But again, look for these scenarios of what happened in the past. Every time we got towards these lows, you're a fool if you kept on to any of your shorts because, bang, the market snapped back up and went higher. And that's the same in all the indices, the S&P, the DAX. SMI, all of them. So, you know, again, we'd have to really dig down and close towards 6,691, yeah, on these daily candles, these hourly candles, before the actual true, you know, sentiment of this selling, uh, you know, market, or this buying market changes. So, again, don't be fooled into thinking that, you know, this is uh, the end of the, of the, the, the bull market, you know, because it's not, you know, technically speaking, you know, we're still very, very strong. And, you know, again, just repeating what happened in the past, every time we reject these low closes on the dailies, we've gone higher. So this is a perfect opportunity today, isn't it? Break through this trend line, all the institutions get long, everybody out there, every retail investor going, oh, yeah, so I'm going to short the foot now because I think Labour will get in and the world's ended. It's, you know, the world's too big for one party. You know, it's not going to be one party anyway, is it? You know, it's going to be some sort of bastardised, you know, coalition or agreement. You know, I'm not a politician, okay? I'm a trader. Politics are fine, relatively interesting, but only to, you know, the same respect as most people do. You know, I hear about it, I listen to it, and, you know, think, what's the point type thing? I don't live in the UK, so I don't care. Yeah, simple. Um, for me, the whole thing I can only go back to is what I understand. I don't understand, really, the motivation to be a politician in the first place. You know, making a difference. Um, there's so many ways in the world you can make a difference. I just don't see how politicians can justify that and how they're... You know they, they they can get on board with it, but that's 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 not why I'm here. You know that's not what you know they're there because people are different. So politicians will set the tone. You know they'll have these beliefs. You know they have these kind of you know reasons for these doing they're doing things. But us as traders, we don't care. We don't care about the politicians. We don't care about the people. All we're looking for, it, you know, is confirmation. You know, is numbers, figures, things that give us an idea. So I know that every time in the past when the FTSE sold off, be it whatever reason, be it a technical reason, be it a fundamental reason, be it an election, every time we got low, we've come back. So already, that is just a daily view. So we go to the hourlies. Well, you know, I mean, you know, that it doesn't get any simpler, does it? That's that daily trend line, and we're back at it. 
So the market's hit the lows after six hours, five hours of selling. We bounce back. So what's the next point of attraction it comes to? Well, what was more interesting on the technical side? So this is why you know that it's, it's just the big players pushing the market around because they're pushing it through technical levels. This isn't fear. This isn't people liquidating their FTSE you know, longs. It isn't people getting out of the FTSE just because they're frightened about the election. It's technical trading, isn't it? Okay? It's technical trading. So the market's on the daily. Yeah? Found this is a point of attraction. So the market hit a low point. Yeah? And the, and the short-term buyers come back in. What do they push it to? They push it back to here. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on that chart and see what that does in uh, the next few uh, you know, the next few minutes, I guess, or or however long we've got the rest of the session for. So, I mean, I guess cable. We've got somebody asking about cable. Yeah, okay, so we've got cable here. Um, again, go back to, to basics, all right? So back to basics, a blank chart. Okay, so we go back to the monthlies, yeah? We use things like Fibonacci because we know we can predict what happened in the past to help us predict what happened in the future, okay? So it went from the highs to the low here. So as I said, I was wrong on my uh, view that the UK would be a first move in interest rates. It looks like it's going to be the US. But well, hold my hands up there. I'm not always right, am I? So we see we had every opportunity here, 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 and here to get to that 50% back at one spot seven in the pound uh, and, and move back to these higher levels. And um, we didn't. Okay, so the US said they were going to move first interest rates or made them noises. So the demand for the pound went down. So really, we haven't got to these low points, have we? We haven't got to to the one spot three four we haven't got you know to these lower wicks here a one spot four two so really now it's a decision of where is the, is the value going to be in the future for the pound so again you can see these um, large moves that happen um you know around this this fear factor and this talk about the election so really you've got to look in your mind do you think from all the things i've said that the uk um is going to be better or worse off under Labour or under the Conservatives. So if you've got a bias and you think who's going to win, then you've got to think what the world global markets are thinking. Remember, $5 trillion is traded every day on the FX markets. So what is the outside world going to think? We get wrapped up in our world when we live in England, a little island, and we think that we're the only thing that matters. Okay? Oh, the election, everyone will be watching. Okay, they might have one eye on it, but there are a lot of big, bigger things in the world to worry about than the UK elections. Okay? Two Muppet parties fighting it out to, you know, to, to do what whatever they want to do. I mean, it, you can only do so much with limited resources, and there's only so much they can do as men. They're just people, okay? They're just people. So at the end of the day, on the monthly charts, it looks like the, 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 the kind of selling momentum is dying out, and every time we try to make these new lows, yet again, they're being rejected. So our idea is, well, what happened in the past can happen in the future. So this was an area of interest at one spot six four. That was an area of interest in the future at one spot seven three. Okay, so let's move through the monthly to the weekly chart and see what's happening. Well, big rejection here on the, on the monthly, so that's at the top of uh, a range, of quite a, an aggressive reversal signal, but the market hasn't. It hasn't reversed, has it? So what are we going to do? What are we going to get involved in? Well, we're going to have to think that really take the uh, election out of the equation and just trade this technically. We're on a downward trend. Okay, the market's rejected here, the market's rejected here. So really... It looks like these bottoms are, are, are quite in, in danger, I would say. I think the, the, the pound is further to fall against the dollar. On the daily, again, it, the, the picture slightly changes. You know, we're, we're, again, looking quite strong. You can even do a smaller Fibonacci uh, from here to figure out where the market is. We haven't got back to the 50% of this, uh, this up move yet, so it still means there's more bulls than bears. So in the short term, we might actually go higher, okay, before we then continue the monthly trend and go lower. Really, for me... It's a very, very difficult one to call. Um, I would say that really, realistically, it doesn't matter what happens in the election. The pound is going to come back into demand. Uh, we're very, very high in the dollar, so the dollar is going to have to come down at some point. The euro, as I've always said, is finished, and, and I will be... Uh, I'm, I'm just so amazed that Greece have been able to get away with what they've got away with. The last friend in Europe, in Spain, has basically turned the back on them. So at the end of the day, they're going to vote with their feet and they're going to leave. They ha they're never going to pay this with debt. They have no chance of paying the debt. People are unhappy. People are unhappy. They live for the short term. Greece are right. Okay, I've said this for so long, uh, you know, I can't even repeat it anymore. So I think the euro is going to absolutely plummet uh, further still after these short term rallies. I think the dollar's going to come down a bit. So I think the pound's going to come back in fashion. So if you look at the hourly charts, again, buy low, sell high. 
Okay, so we're looking for these lower fibs and these rejections. So yeah, I mean we could get involved anywhere to be honest in the uh, in the pound and start to buy. And uh, you know, I think there's some good value around in the pound. You know, I think all these lower levels, these lower fibs, you know, are acting. I think you know until we we get back to one spot five five. You know, there's just just bags of room to buy. I mean, you just all you have to do is look. Really, I would say, at this daily chart, and this gives you the idea. As long as we hold above one spot five zero three five six, as long as we hold above, you know, daily close of one five one four seven seven, then I think we're we're going on to make new 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 highs in the pound. And again, look at your weeklies for your targets. This previous high and this. I mean, it's a bit contradictory at the minute because we've got. Monthly signals that were still quite bullish, I would say, because this this bottom. But then weekly signals, you know, they're quite bearish because of that closed formation. And then daily signals again that are quite bullish. So this is really where you have to balance out your time views and think when you're trading. I don't hold a trade for a month. You might do. I don't hold a trade for more than half an hour generally. So what would I be interested in the daily closes? Well, I'm not. But what I'd be looking for is going on to the hourly charts and saying, fine, we're consolidating the market here, rejection to the low side, rejection to the low side, rejection to the low side. So I'm looking for the market to get back to these highs. So when we get to a low point, if we don't close yeah, around this 151477 and below, then I'll start to buy the market low and get out high. Again, you might do that in your 15-minute charts. Again, another example of how I traded this Fibonacci. Okay, 50% rejection. I would have bought it here. Okay. I wasn't trading at the time, so I didn't see it, but that's another way. And I'll, I'll show you again, I mean, just another way of, of viewing these things. Let me just bring that back into focus. So again, still looking strong and in, the, uh, in the FTSE. We'll have a look at this different time frames in a minute. We'll show you how that trend works. But if we look at the, uh, the pound in this perspective, you know, this is generally how I'll look to trade it in the day. So we can see that same daily formation. We're still looking a little bit bullish after them two days of selling. So we'll look for good points of interest on the hourly, on the 15-minute. So again, when we see the, the market bounce off these lows here, one, two, three, indecision, four green candles. So that's a strong directional up move. So if we don't sell off in the same kind of manner, then it looks like that strong directional up move in these 15-minute candles can continue. So that, again, is at 50% here. You look to buy the 50% of this up move. If we don't close below it, we should go on to make new highs. Where are the new highs? Well, we know one spot five two two three, one spot five two four six four, one spot five two six one three, and above. You know, look on the five-minute charts. You know, and see how these candles are. There's a lot more big green candles than there are red down candles. So for whatever reason, people are buying the pound. So what we want to do is look for low points on them five-minute charts, 15-minute charts, and buy, buy low. You know, it's as simple as that. And you can do this view on any product. It could be the FTSE. It can be gold. You know, this is how you intraday trade. Okay, is it, it's how you do it. You know, it's look, the FTSE. Yeah, lots of green. We come back down loads and loads of levels for the institutional traders to break through. We break through them, but we push the market as low as we can. One, two, three, four five hours. How does that look on the 15 minute charts? Well, a bit more structured, but we see all these big red candles and we finally start to reject and we can't close any lower. What does the market do? It bounces. Okay. And how does it bounce? It bounces like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, five minute candles. So you find the low point. Yeah. Hold your nerve. And then once we've rejected here, this nice little uh, kind of, um, you know, kind of hammer formation here at the bottom of this five-minute trend, all you've got to do is wait for a green close. One, two, three, four, five. And if you can hold your nerve, you're making from the low point, you know, 23 ticks, 34 ticks, you know, uh, 47 ticks, and then 50 ticks. And then what happens when it hits a high point? It comes back down. Okay, so we're buying low and we're selling high. Now, the temptation is that you always look at the smaller time frame charts, like your five minutes and, you know, your one-minute chart, and you think, well, of course I'd buy here, Steve, and hold it. Of course I'd sell here, Steve, and hold it. Would you really? No, because what you have to look is the bigger picture. The bigger picture comes from your dailies. It comes from your hourly and 15 minutes, and your entry point might come from the five minutes, okay? But you've missed the buying opportunity now, haven't you? Okay, you'd have to buy low. You have to be buying red and selling when it's green. You can't be selling now because you'll get the pullbacks, and you can't be buying now because we've seen too much green. 
So it's that kind of chicken and egg scenario. So you'd have to let the market come further down before you bought it again. And I wouldn't fancy selling it now because if you do, you've got every opportunity of the market pulling back quickly and stopping you out. So, yes, I mean, that's why it's all about timing. You know, some of the things that I, you know, I've written in my, you know, my books and you know, my many, many webinars, people just forget the basic rules of trading. You know, if I'm buying the market, I'm buying it when it's red. Okay, I don't want to be buying it when it's green. I want to be buying it here when it's red, and then it will go green because it has to. Charts are self-fulfilling. You know, all the technical analysis is self-fulfilling. What was red will then become green. What was low will become high. The only element you have to worry about in trading is time. Time's the only killer. If you had a million pounds in your trading account, that buys you time. You'd make much more money because you'd have time. You wouldn't get worried about being 100 pounds offside because you've got a million pounds in your account have to think how banks trade, how the institutional traders, okay? That is what we're looking for, how the big fish push around the retail traders. We can't trade the way banks do because we don't have the money, okay? How do you know when to buy red? Well, I mean, you, you use chart patterns like this, okay? So if we've seen five hours of selling in the FTSE, okay, we look for that, 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 that gets me mirrored through the smaller time frames and look for rejections. So that's how you know that's the end of the selling, yeah, because that view here, when we reject this little formation here, is that. So double bottom wick straight line, yeah, here. That's when you know it's the you know it's the bottom of the market. You you, you look and you know you just take that level through to the smaller time frames, yeah, and you see right. Well, okay, what's it what's it doing on the, on the five minute charts? Well, it's holding out at the bottom here. What's it doing in the 15-minute charts? Holding the bottom here on the hourly. Okay, we've seen a lot of red here, so we'll probably think for six hours of red, we might see one hour or two hour of green. Okay, and that's it. But you have to get in at these low points and these low points of the charts, yeah, in order to see it green. Okay. So I mean, it's not easy. Like I said, you know, these things are easy, guys. We'd all be out there, you know, making millions of pounds in the markets. It's not. It's difficult, but it is achievable. But you have to look at the markets in the right ways. Or you know, otherwise you know you're not going to get the full you know the full the full picture. So FTSE's recovered, gone back up. What's he going to do in the short term? Come back down. Where's he going to get to? Fibonacci. Okay, so it's going to get down to here. I would be absolutely amazed if the FTSE doesn't get back down to six eight three three spot nine one. Why? Where else is it going to go? Okay, it's gone up. It's going to have to come down. When it goes down, it's going to have to go back up. It's all about the element of timing, being right at the right time. So we'll come back and visit that, that FTSE chart in a second. What about the euro dollar? Okay, well, euro dollar. Euro dollar's finished. Okay, a couple of reasons why the euro dollar is finished, and that's because all these rallies we see are central banks. Central banks, governments, people that are frightened, people with huge sums of money, okay, liquidating positions, adding to positions, generally get involved in the markets. The fundamental fact of the matter is the Eurozone has made promises it can't keep. It's cashing checks that Germany can balance. Simple. So if you've got Deutsche Bank, you've got UBS, some of the biggest you know, trading firms in the world saying that the Euro is going to get to parity at one spot zero, then it's going to get to parity at one spot zero. That is the way it is. Okay? It's simple. Okay? So we've seen these rallies in the Euro, and you know, very, very strong. I think a lot of people have got burnt selling these high points in the Euro, but then you know, you have to go back to the bigger time frames, the monthly. We've seen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine months of selling. You can't go back in the charts and see nine months of selling, okay? One, two, three, four, five, maybe, but not nine, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but not nine, so obviously, after nine months of selling, you're going to see some green. So you've got to think, is the euro going to get back into this nine month of selling area up here, so that 50% or some value, or we're going to see a little bit of natural green that we have to see some profit taking and opposite orders coming in, and then the market gets to this point, and then it starts to go down, back to 1.11. There we go, back to 1.10, bang break below, probably get down to 0 0.85 at some point over the next 18 months. Okay, That's how it works. Go th through your weeklies. Yeah, Loads and loads of red. Consolidation, red, consolidation, red, consolidation. Have to take some profit. So we've seen four weeks of buying. Okay, But if we don't get to up here in the charts quickly, then the down move momentum is far too strong. I'm going to push you back down. 
So I can only see the euro going down from the, the, these recent highs that it's made. I don't, see, I don't see how it can ever potentially get back to one spot two five, one spot three five. There is no good news. Greece staying in the European Union is not good news. So there is only bad news for Greece. There's only bad news for the euro. And it's only going to go down from these high points. But it's a matter of time. If you start selling the euro here and it goes up to here, you're going to lose your money. You let it get up to here and then sell it, you probably make some money. It's about being right at the right time, not having the right opinion, okay? So to go through the dailies, already starting to look a little bit weaker now. This is, uh, again, a nice technical formation where the market's had an indecision, and then we've just seen the, you know, the big institutional banks push it back up. They might try and break this level here, these previous highs, at uh, one spot, one, four, five, nine, eight. But I don't think we're going to stay above there for very long. Then we come back down very aggressively, hit the lows, and the euro will get to one spot zero uh, in the next probably two or three months. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, there's nothing more certain, nothing more certain, the euro gets to one spot zero. Well, I mean, the, the, the kind of euro dollar and the pound don't really have the same correlations uh, as as they did uh, before. I mean, unfortunately, because the markets have become so incredibly complex and there's just so much money out in the world, we don't really know what should happen, to be honest. Um, it's very dangerous to trade direct and indirect in, in correlations um, at the minute. You know, again, you can see that even when they, you know, they, the, the indices are coming off, like the DAX came off very, very aggressively, but gold followed it. You know, we're in these really strange times right now where, you know, up is down and down is up, and we don't really know, do we? Um, it's, you know, it's really, really difficult, isn't it? You know, it's really, really difficult to kind of to figure out, you know, what the world's trying to achieve. And I think any kind of longer-term view um, for a trader uh, is very dangerous. So I think, even though I've said you know the euro is going to get down to one spot zero, that's a longer-term view. You know I don't mind buying it in the, in the intraday if it's lower. I don't mind selling it intraday if it's high. But I'm not going to hold any overnight positions because there's too much uncertainty in the world. So you know what was this correlation with the, with the pound going to do? Well, I mean I think it's going to go stronger. You know I just think the demand for global strong economies, it, you know, on a global scale, is too big. So I can see Russia buying pounds. I can see China buying pounds. You know, I'm not talking about your average guy on the street here. I'm talking about proper institutional investors. So another example of this up move that I said, we got to the 50%. And look, we're going green. Okay, so the market has only got these upper levels to, to target. So we're going to get to one spot five two four eighty. Then above that, you know, we're going to get to these upper points above one spot five two seven eighty. You know, this is just how you look at the markets intraday. So the FTSE come down very, very strongly. We've hit that daily um, trend line that we drew in. So if it closes below that on the hourlies, maybe we sell back down, make some new lows. I don't know. The DAX is, you know, pretty much retraced the majority of the morning's losses. The S&P hasn't, though. Okay? The SMI hasn't. So the FTSE, you know, hasn't either. So what do we, what do we take from that conclusion? Is, is the FTSE got higher to go? Or will that now run out, come back down, and the DAX is going to turn in reverse and go very aggressively down? I mean, that's why it's difficult, because markets can act on their own, you know, in a, in a, in a very short period of time. It'd be actually quite aggressive. So the DAX, you know, if you look at this DAX here, if you look at that oh, probably on a 15-minute chart, yeah, <clears throat> hit the lows, then one, two, poof, consolidation, three, four. The DAX, why I trade it? It's because you get these individual candles that have such great volumes. But, you know, if, if at this point you'd be thinking, well, I don't know, but I want to sell the DAX, but I want to buy the DAX. To be honest, I don't know from this point. And you don't get any real confirmation from the rest of the markets. You know, because if the DAX is going to go higher, then, you know, the S&P is going to go higher, hasn't it? I don't think the S&P is going to go higher from this point, to be honest. I think, you know, the, this selling formation really tells me that, you know, the market's got further to drop. And, you know, like you said, you know, the FTSE, I think, in the, in the medium term, after this nonsense of the election, will get back above 7,000 because there's just too much money in, in the markets right now. And I don't think, you know, the markets will truly in sell off. And I mean the indices, you know, the DAX, uh, the UK 100 and the S&P until we, we make a firm decision on interest rates. So I think there's still upward movement in the indices. <clears throat> so anything else, guys? What's your thoughts on the election? I mean, we've obviously got a cross-section of people today. What do you think? Is it going to be conservative majority? Is it going to be, you know, labor majority? too close to call? I mean, what, what's your thoughts? I mean, are you actually, has anybody actually got a position on right now, are they long or short, based upon their political views? 
because it'd be interesting to see that, to be honest. Okay, what I meant was the euro dollar goes into parity in the long term. Would it not also at that point affect cable cause to drop lower, the retest the lower of the year? Um, yeah, man. I, yeah, I mean, I see your point, but I've just explained these correlations are not what they used to be. There, there's an, there's not this direct correlation so much anymore with the euro, with the pound dollar and the euro dollar. Okay, there's too many people focused on the negativity in in the, uh, the euro and the positivity of the dollar to really be tying it up with what happens in the pound dollar. Okay, the the, the dollar's fairly robust, fairly strong. You know, we've seen some weakness. Okay, over the last few days, but when we look at the look at the monthlies. You know, there's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. I mean, what what's what's the, you know, that's why people don't understand the element at the time. You know, dailies. Oh, four days down. Oh no, monthly. It's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. You look at a raise that in in a nanosecond. Look at these monthlies green. Look at it. Look at it all. Look at it. <laughs> you know where we've been in the past. Up here, up here. So, of course, we're consolidating after this huge up move. But the dollar's not finished. The dollar's the world's currency. The dollar's going to, you know, be the first one to move on interest rates. There is more demand for the dollar than any other currency. So, yes, we might sell off on the short term. But what short term? A week? Okay? Is a week a long term? You know, it's not, is it? You know, it depends. You know, an hour can be a long time in trading. A week's a long time in trading. A month's a long time in trading. It depends where you're involved. If you're down here, long... Were you bothered the market's red right now? No, because you're playing with all that profit. You have to think about who is trading these things. Central banks, world banks, governments, huge investment houses. Anyone that's long is not interested, you know, that we're coming down at this point. Okay? When soon as we say we're moving interest rates in the US, bang. We get back to previous levels and we're hitting 123, 126. We're going to get above 130 in the dollar yen. Simple. Simple as that. So yes, back to your point. Uh, I just don't see the uh, the natural correlation between the euro dollar and the pound. You cannot look at it like that. Uh, and if you do, you're a long-term investor. Watch gold here. Gold's just spiking up for some reason. Okay, so be very, very, you know, be very, keep an eye on gold because when these things happen, it's very dangerous. I mean, watch gold; it can easily get to these upper levels. You know, one spot, eight, uh, nine, spot, eighty. You know, these are the things that I look for on a daily basis. You know, gold jumping for no reason because these can be precursors. You know, if you see big. Uh, you know, candles in gold, you know, something will filter through. So gold's going to come up, FTSE should then really reject, shouldn't it, and come back lower. Yeah, we know the DAX is very high, so maybe the DAX is a good sell if gold continues to, to spike up. They're the kind of correlations you want to be looking at. They're the kind of things that will give you an indication of what the market's thinking and what the market's doing. So again, very strong in the SMI. Okay, we just got some comments coming through over the wires. I can just hear it off off, uh, off, off my squawk. People are saying that um, you know uh, Verifacus and, and Greece have reached a deal. So you know, again, that would actually send gold down. So I don't understand why gold's going up. But you know, all these things have been speculated, and we had rumours about them. You know, for um, for a, a long period of time now. So I have to be very careful about these uh, these rumours that filter through to the market. So probably hung Parliament, uh, a lot of uncertainty, uh, markets don't like uncertainty. So, yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. I mean, that's the whole point, isn't it? That people will be taking, or institutions will be taking you know, this opportunity to, to trade off the back of uncertainty. And that's why the FTSE is coming off. Okay, the FTSE will come off after the election, no matter what happens. Okay, because then we know, we know what we're in store for. So it will be another selling day after we know the result tomorrow. And then probably Monday, maybe a bit more selling, panic selling, and then we'll go back up. We'll go back up until interest rates go up. I've told you that will happen. So dip buy in the FTSE. But don't get involved now. You know, don't start buying it now. You, know, you need to buy it lower, if you think, because we're going to continue the trend. There's no way we've broken this downtrend in the FTSE. So we're going to, go, going to continue to go lower before we go higher. And you need to widen your extremes when you're trading off the back of this fundamental information. Because although I, don't, I say it doesn't really count, it doesn't mean anything in the markets, you know, it probably does mean something to somebody. Okay? So it means something to somebody. So and that, maybe that's a hedge fund manager, or maybe that's, you know, uh, you know, a central bank that's got a large position, and maybe they're liquidating. You know, maybe they're using this fear as an opportunity to get in, involved in the markets. So, uh, again, Ian saying a hung parliament again. Yeah, I think that's a good stand. So, what makes it difficult for me to understand is that when cable made a bottom at, at that one spot four five six area, the euro was also making a bottom and reverse to the upside. Does that show a correlation? Well, it shows a correlation. 
It's in the fact that markets show correlations. I mean, look. Okay, let's make this clear. Okay, let's not be around the bush here. You have to understand if you're trading things technically or you're trading them fundamentally, and you have to understand the element of time. Right? These are two charts. Okay, so yes, there is a direct correlation in that when the markets are low, yeah, the markets are low in both. Okay, so when we've got the pound, dollar, we've got the euro, dollar, when they're low, they're low. When they're up, they're up. But this isn't necessarily a direct correlation. On the dailies, we're at the absolute highs. We're not at the absolute highs on, on the pound, dollar, are we? So there isn't a direct correlation. Just because this is the highs now doesn't necessarily mean that the pound will go on to make new highs from this point. Okay? What you have to understand is what the market's doing in the meantime. There are different reasons why the market, the GBP, uh, US dollar is moving, and the euro dollar is moving. This is all to do with, will the Greece deal come in? Will it actually be good? Will the eurozone be fixed? Let's buy some euro because it's massively low. That's why this is going up. It's trading off that fundamental information. The pound is coming back down because we might have seen some fear. We don't know what's going to happen after the election. We're frightened. Ooh, boo-hoo, the world's going to end for the UK. I'm going to sell some pound because it's actually towards the lower the range, and I think there's some value. Okay? So the direct and indirect correlations are whatever you make of them. Okay? You can bring any products up you want and make an argument that they're directly correlated. People like to do that with currencies because they're trading in baskets, but they are actually separate products. Okay, so let's look at gold and let's look at uh, the DAX. Okay, there's a, an inverse correlation with the indices and with gold. So when gold comes down, the indices are high. So are the indices high? Well, we're mid range. Is, you know, is gold down? Yeah, gold is down. The indices, realistically, should be higher. So is that an indirect direct correlation? Is that something I would want to trade off? No. Anything else? You know, let's look at the dollar CAD versus the euro dollar. Do we get a correlation here? Well, dollar counts towards the low, euros at the high. Well, that could be good. So what am I looking for now? I'm looking for this to bounce, the dollar CAD, so strength to come back into the dollar over the CAD. More people are buying dollars, more people then would be selling euros, wouldn't they? So that now at the low should come up, and that should now ming the market down. When you talk about currency coefficients, and you talk about you know how currencies interact with each other, four five trillion dollars is traded every single day. I can't even imagine that amount of money. Four, five trillion dollars. Okay? So what happens in one market might certainly not necessarily happen in another market. And remember the element of time. Okay? Towards the high in the dailies, it could be down here in a few hours. So look what happened on the hourly charts. Okay? Try and don't rely on these correlations to be set in stone. Correlations change. Currency pegs change. See what happened with the Swiss and the Euro. We're still feeling the ramifications of that. Understand the bigger picture stuff, you know, the political stuff. You know, the, 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 the class divides. You know, there's the problems in Europe, the problems in the UK, the problems in America. You know, what currency is just trading? GDP, isn't it? What country is going to be strongest in the future? And picking the right time. So if the CAD looks strong here and we're going to break these upper bond demands, by all means, sell some euros. But, you know, to me, it looks like the, the dollar in the short term is perhaps going to come down a little bit. And therefore, the euro goes back up if it's a direct correlation. So, I mean, going back to the FTSE, uh, we're looking, you know, again, fairly strong in the hourlies. You know, the market's bouncing back up. And again, these five minutes are great ones to watch. We didn't get back down to the 50%, did we? Didn't get back down to the 30%. So again, these fibs on the short term are acting. So we're going to make a new high in the FTSE, which means we get above 68580. That's intraday trading right there. Um, what's your opinion would be a good value to buy cable in the coming days and a position trade to hold? Uh, to be honest, I don't do that kind of trading. My average trade is about half an hour, so I don't try and be right anymore. Best trade for me would be get short gold, stay short gold. That's it. Okay, I don't know of any other trade. I don't do long-term trading. I don't make long-term uh, calls. So I, I don't know what to tell you. There isn't anything I can tell you. I'm being honest. So really, about the election today, all it's going to be is more fear, more uncertainty. Sends the pound down, sends the footy down. We all buy it back on Monday because it's cheap as chips. Okay? Whatever government gets in, no matter what faction it is, no matter what coalition, it's just the same people with the same ideas generally trying to make the same things happen. So markets go down, and then you buy them back cheaper. Simple as that. 
my advice if you're a retail trader and you don't have a big account is stay out of the markets for the next couple of days and go and mop up all the cheap money on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, I won't, certainly won't be trading unless I see it as something cast iron and I trade lots of money, big accounts. So, um, you know, I, I'm not really kind of in the mood for kind of uncertain panic buying and selling, to be honest. I don't want to take that stress on. So I'm happy to let the markets calm down and get back to some sort of normality next week. That'd be my advice. So, guys, I mean, let's just go back to the overview and uh, see where we stand. FTSE's back to that trend line, so we think we're going to erase these these losses and the, you know, the DAX is going to drag it higher. Fine, buy above that trend line. S&P has gained a bit of strength on that. So that spike up in gold, so gold should come down and indices go up. SMI is looking very strong out of all these markets. And again, back then to that 50%, potentially in the pound. Pound goes lower in the short term based upon the fear. And if the pound goes down, they expect the FTSE to go down. But don't do these correlations. You know, again, the FTSE is trading off the election, the pound is trading off the election. The US, Germany, UK, the euro dollar are trading off something else. They don't care about the UK election. Okay? You're just getting people involved in the short term for a bit of profit. All right, guys. Well, pretty much my advice is, from all that conclusion, is that no matter what uh, faction gets in, the FTSE is going to sell off after we know uh, what the, the final result is, be it Conservative majority, be it Labour uh, majority. And then some point next week is going to get buyback because it won't be the end of the world. You know, whoever's in power still has the same problems, still has to tackle interest rates, still has to tackle housing does tackle benefits, you know, and they only have the same money the taxpayers pay for. So the, uh, the rules of the equation don't really change. Remember, we're trading 20% fundamental, so the, mar the market movements might be a bit quicker at the minute, but still understand that technical. Go back to the dailies, the hourlies, okay, and then the five minutes, and figure out where value you is. What was high will be low. What was low will be high. Try and figure out from your hourlies where you can get involved in 15 minutes and 5 minutes. It all pivots around that hourly in 15 minutes, guys. So, so important. All right, guys. Well, hope you enjoyed it. Some more honesty from Steve there. Um, if you uh, want anything else to ask me, get me on Twitter at Steve Roughly. Uh, email us roughly at tradingmaker.com. Anything else, guys, you know where to get me. Okay. Have a great afternoon, and uh, let's see what happens You know, tomorrow after the election. Uh, like I said, I mean, Monday for me is where the value is going to be had. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure. Cheers to FX Street and the other guys. Take it easy. See you soon.